like, share, and subscribe, and ring that little bell. Ring that little bell so you are notified when new videos drop. It's on these videos, let me tell you, by jiggery. Some of these j videos are uh, are good enough to be published on YouTube. I, I know. Incredible that may seem. Uh, uh, so we're going to be looking at an article from Doctor Who magazine, uh, and you're going to go, oh, that's why I don't buy Doctor Who magazine anymore. It's not because it's uh, uh, obnoxious, although a lot of it is. It's not because it's, it's obnoxious. Uh, it's because it's crap. <laughs> so, yeah, literally, the most pointless feature I've ever... I'm reading this thing, uh, and I'm going... This is the most pointless feature of all time. So I uh, I think this is video worthy. I think this is video worthy. Uh, 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 I think it's quite funny as well. I mean, listen, I have nothing against the guy who this uh, art feature is about. This guy called Harry Gorkum, uh, Gorkum who uh, nearly got the role as a doctor in, in, in 96. Nearly, but didn't. I, I, but it's a four. But yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll look at it together. And, and you know, m much like me, I think you're going to look on it uh, somewhat amazed. Before we get into it, though, can you hit the like button? That'll be freaking awesome. Thank you very much. Can you hit the share button? Uh, uh, I like to be shared. <laughs> hit the like button, hit the share button. Hit that subscribe button. Now, nobody tell YouTube. And I mean, nobody tell YouTube. My, subscri my subscribers have been doing quite well. We're, uh, my subscribers are doing quite well. We're getting to close to 3,000. Don't tell YouTube. They will They will take some off me before you can blink. But uh, uh, if you're subscribed, make sure you're still subscribed. And, and if you're not subscribed, if you could consider hitting that subscribe button. That's really unbelievably helpful. It's, uh, you know, us independent creators uh, uh, do need your help, really. We exist for you. So thank you very much. Uh, uh, and uh, comment. Comment is lovely. The algorithm eats up your comments. Nim, 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 nim. I've still got like 45 comments to answer from yesterday. But uh, yeah, if you comment, I will, you know, go, go to trouble of answering you. I mean, you're good enough to write something. I, I will read it and reply. Uh, uh, and uh, you want to be super fantastic, wonderful? Go check out my Indiegogo. Two awesome comic books. Uh, uh, and now I'm going to be re you know, uh, relaunching the campaign for its final week. Very shortly. <laughs> I know. We've seen it every year very shortly. I know. I just got a lot, a lot on. And it's just me. But these are two freaking awesome comic books. You get a whole bunch of extras. You can get the extras, you know, on their own for like ten bucks, which I thought was pretty good. Uh, the extras include for the male gaze cards, uh, cards based on my you know, twelve-year-old titillations, uh, uh, all genre-related. Keeping the British end up, party like it's nineteen ninety-nine. Don't even think it's citizen. Oh yes, you know I am. Uh, uh, no hanky panky in the TARDIS. Uh, uh, I'm sensing strong emotions, Captain. And of course, and of course, uh, uh, my, one of my favourites. Uh, uh, this one I handled for no reason whatsoever, just because I love you guys. Uh, 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 the force is female. The force is female. If we hit eight grand, and I think we will, I think we will. Everyone's going to get this A2 poster, uh, 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 Bohemian Time and Space. We've got a bunch of add-on posters as well. We have this one, uh, uh, Forever Young. It's an older Fourth Doctor, an older Sarah Jane. I, I think I worked out what I want to do to this to make it, uh, push it over the edge. But I think I got an idea. Uh, Forever Young, uh, we have, uh, uh, the eyes have it over here. And we have Great Balls of Fire. Great Balls of Fire. i got one more. I, I just saw the preliminary uh, uh, sketches for it. It looks really good. Another for the male gaze card. Uh, and that will be coming hopefully tomorrow. Hopefully tomorrow. Maybe I might save it for my my, my Tuesday stream. Okay. Fine. Let's let's read this most pointless article of all time. Right? This most pointless article of all time. So firstly, these pictures of the people uh, uh, who, who auditioned for uh, uh, the Eighth Doctor role. Uh, yeah, listen, I used to have this book called Regeneration. It was Gary Russell wrote. It's like a hardback book on the making of this. And they, yeah, they, they basically went for all, the, uh, all these uh, all these different actors. Jo yeah, John Sheston sounds, it sounded interesting. Uh, but yeah, anybody who was like vaguely doctorish, you know, they, they had... Um, all the way through, though, Philip Siegel and, and all every documentary, every book, everything, they said, I always intended there to be um, uh, uh, Paul McGann. He was always the number one choice. Is that true? It might just be 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 Hollywood bull, uh, 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 bull crap. From this article, it sounds like it might be. It sounds like, but uh, you know, Alan Yentop, <laughs> former uh, controller of BBC, um, uh, seemingly did feel this way. So fine. So uh, the story is this. The story is this. It's about uh, this guy called Harry Gorkum, uh or Gorkum, who was a jobbing actor, a, a jobbing British actor in America at the time of casting. Who went who was cast who went for an audition and it went very well and then didn't get it right that that's the story I mean, which is that's how that's how it works being an actor that's why most people say being an actor somewhat sucks so uh, let's read this article which is yeah, I mean there's so much crap in this it's unbelievable right so I, I firstly who wrote this uh, Nick Shep uh, Stetchfield so he's uh, 
I, I know him from uh, what was it SFX magazine. I, look, SFX magazine is a bit painfully woke, yeah, and it's uh, <laughs> you know, it's uh, uh, maybe maybe he is too. Okay, so we all know Lost Doctors, uh, John Hurtsgrill, Warrior. Uh, Joe Miner's formidable agent of the division. Now, at this point, at this point, yeah, you're in Doctor Who magazine. Maybe you want to just, I would minimize uh, things that turn people off, right? Because people have been turned off from buying Doctor Who magazine uh, quite a lot. And so, you know, you can kind of see, let's look at the cover for a second, right? You can kind of see this when you look at the cover of Doctor Who magazine. And this is not just this, this is pretty much every issue. There is no sign of Jodie Whittaker whatsoever on the cover. Like, no sign. Of, you have the current logo as it because it's a. Uh, uh, an edict from Cardiff, but like no sign of the current era of Doctor Who, which is currently filming, and there should be tons of information going on, tons of it. Like when Russell D. Davis uh, ran Doctor Who, there was just insane amounts of excitement. He couldn't wait to show everything to you, right? Uh, none whatsoever. So yeah, listen, the, the, we understand. I think this this decision, uh, uh, which they make week, month after month after month, is is. Uh, indicative of the popularity of the of, of the 13th Doctor and the 13th Doctor storyline. So I, I would if you're smart enough to remove it from the front cover, right? To not uh, you know that it hurts your sales. Uh, uh, don't pepper it through your your magazine. It's just, you know, a good idea not to do that. So uh, yeah. and then it gets even worse. Uh, all those timeless children and teams that don't have you have you been uh, like asleep in fandom, right? <laughs> Forever. Uh, um uh, yeah, like, I, like, yeah, no, just what? There's no need for this, right? There's no need for this. Then they go into like some stupid. I've said, oh, they are nearly doctors, and they list them amongst them Richard Griffiths. Uh, as far as I know, no. Okay, this, this, this comes from Doctor Who magazine. I think issue was it two four six or something. Or two, I can't remember the issue. Sophie Aldred was the guest editor, and they imagined a se at seasons twenty seven and twenty eight. Uh, which essentially had Richard Griffiths as the as a doctor with Julia Swahala, Shwa I think, as uh, as the companion. Uh, they and a lot of the elements of that you then resurface in the big finish uh, uh, lost stories for season twenty seven. Uh, but yeah, no, he was as far as I know, as far as I know, never in the running. And that okay, okay, just some basic research, mate. Basic research. Uh, uh, you know, it used to be when Doctor Who when I was young, right? When in like the eighties, I'm reading it, and they'll put some saying in that that was wrong, which they, a lot they did that a lot in the eighties. You always go, oh, I must be wrong, right? I must be wrong. No, no, you're not. In fact, and look, generally speaking, when you look at saying and you think you're right, uh, uh, but you ha respect the authority of the person uh, uh, who 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 would have to be wrong, you're normally right, right? It's, it's not like I remember, uh, you know, I built my own house. Uh, and I'm standing in the kitchen, I'm looking at the windows and go, the windows look a bit small. Those windows, and I think, I'm not a builder, I don't know, maybe the floor's going to be ra raised up a little bit, they look, but the windows look a bit, uh, they build the house, no, the windows are too, too small. We actually, we've actually had a freaking fortune uh, uh, tunneling out an extension to the window. Oh, man. <laughs> Those windows were too small. But hey, just generally speaking, if you if you think something, you're probably right, okay? It's like, your instinct is probably right. Fine, so... Uh, Harry Bunk, uh, came closer than most at the TARDIS key. Uh, one of the, uh, uh, take, uh, and they have the cars, they only to have it taken away at the final moment. How, how must it feel to know that you're in a whisker of popular culture, Im uh, 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 immortality? Well, not really. I think, okay, we'll, we'll read the article. But <laughs> it's like, what, there's one story, uh, and I, I, I just, yeah, I, I, yeah, look, Paul McGann, uh, uh, had a new lease of life from Big Finish, but, uh, he was never really in the public consciousness as the as the, as the doctor. Uh, so it's so, okay. So here we get into the interview. It says there are only two roles in the world where your phone goes uh, 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 and you've got it, uh, and you've got it. Where is it? Uh, uh, you know, you've got it overnight. Oh man, up and zoom in, in and out. Uh, overnight. Oh man, one more, one more. Zoom in. Yeah. Uh, and your life has changed, says, says uh, uh, Harry, who nearly starred as the Ace Doctor in the 1996 uh, TV movie. There's James Bond and Doctor Who. It, I understand. I understand. These are two coveted roles, right? I understand that. You're not. You're not. Uh, 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 you're not breaking any new new information there. Uh, I was determined to say okay, so. The British actor uh, he re he re relocated to America in the early 1990s. I was determined to break in there. Well, yeah, it makes sense. Uh, one of my first jobs. By the way, do you remember? Um, 
who was it? Guy Singer, who was in Allo Allo, right? He played the uh, uh, somewhat effeminate gay panzer uh, tank commander, uh, German tank, yeah, panzer German tank commander. Uh, uh, suddenly, you know, I, in the 90s, I kept seeing him in tons of things in America. He must have moved to America. He was in Babylon 5, and it was in Seinfeld. I'm like, well, well and, and then I think he came back to England eventually. But, like, uh, uh, yeah, it's still always weird that when that happens. Uh, I didn't realize until also how many people worldwide they they were seeing for it. Yeah, listen again. I, I the feeling I get from reading from my extensive reading I've done over the years and, and you know uh, documentaries is that they 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 had Paul McGann in mind. That's at least what they're saying. I, it sounds like it might be Hollywood BS, but they had Paul McGann in mind and they had to view other people. I mean, that's just how casting works. Uh. Uh, 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 they're looking at crazy names like John Sesson, Robert Lindsay, Robert Lindsay. Yeah. Uh, he would be an interesting. He'd be a bit old by then, I think. Maybe uh, I had no. Is he still alive, Robert Lindsay? He still loves Citizen Smith. Uh, I just thought it was this local, uh, a local American product. It was a pilot. Uh, I've been up for pilots before, but it was Doctor Who, and I was really excited about it. That's really the whole, the entirety of the article. It was Doctor Who, and he's really excited about it. Uh, okay. As Harry recalls, he initially auditioned for producer Philip Seagull, uh, Philip David Seagull, uh, and read again for director uh, Jeffrey Sachs. It was a lovely speech they prepared. It was basically a soliloquy. I think uh, I was talking to the master that summed up the Doctor, uh, the fact that he almost had uh, multiple personalities. I've done, I've done a lot of Shakespeare, and I've always loved playing a soliloquy yeah listen dude i get it this would have been a great role yeah it would have been fan freaking tactic i 100 percent, you know get that uh where was it uh so, so impressing sequel and sacked harry was invited to workshop the scene before uh uh before auditioning for Fo the fox network uh, network executives yeah so it goes you got to get you ne once you have the creators like you then you got to get past this, the many levels of suits which is where he ran afoul um so the workshop we probably spent at least two hours go going through it he remembers finding the colors finding the changes the tempo uh it was a really creative pro process the fox audition was glorious well, i'm glad to know, because they had uh, a small stage and a, and a kind uh, with a kind of auditorium it, so it was like being back in the theater again lovey uh i just had uh, uh, i was i just had a field day with the scene uh, and I love I love playing Doctor Who. I believe you. I believe you. Uh, it's such a rich character. At one point, you can be dramatic and serious. You've got to save the world. And then you're asking, have you seen my jelly babies? Yes. Okay. There's a juxtaposition of the character. It's not just a character. It's a juxtaposition of Doctor Who. You know, I, I remember, uh, was it Stephen Moffat talking about Girl in the Fireplace and saying, yeah, having, the, having a horse wander into a spaceship from uh, 17th century France is Doctor Who, right? It's just so incredibly Doctor Who. It's that juxtaposition. Um, yeah, sure, I think I, yeah, I agree with it. Uh, hear, hearing Harry say those lines, uh, uh, and not just uh, uh, um, say them but, but play them is momentarily jolting. It's as if uh, one of those parallel universes has broken through into our well, but, but what we okay, I'm glad you're hearing it. We haven't. Uh, Harry soon learned his take on the doctor had been well received, it had been received. It should I think well received? I had been received, well, obviously, been received. I, I, that's why he went for an interview for an audition for. I went back to my trailer because I was shooting uh, first time out. An hour later, the phone goes away and it says, Harry, I got I got some news for you. You've got Doctor Who. Everybody love you. Okay, so it sounds like his agent was a bit of a dick there because he uh, uh, he didn't. Uh, oh, there he is today. And uh, I think, do you have, have any pictures of him um, from the time? Yeah, okay, this is it. This is a picture of him from the time. That, so that's yeah, kind of look Paul McGannish. Okay. Back. Uh, let's, uh, start to zoom out a little bit. Okie dokie. Uh, you, you've got it. Everyone, everyone said, This is fantastic. We found him. I know. You must have been elated. I couldn't believe it. I remember I fell to my knees in my trailer. I kind of collapsed. It was a bit of an emotional moment. Yeah, you, your agent was a dick to you, mate. I'm sorry. Uh, he said, My God, I'm going to play Doctor Who in America. I must be really excited. Then the nightmare started. Again, how this is. Television production. An hour later, Harris phone rang again. This time, his agent said he would be he would have to perform the scene one more time. This time, on tape. So I went back in. 
Jeffrey Saxon Phillips even says, we've got to sell, uh, now we've got to sell you to the BBC. Yes, you've got to sell him to all the partners. And that was the big problem with getting the 96 movie off, you know, off the ground, having everybody agree on everything. And it was, that was that was very difficult. Uh, and he said, what do you mean? They said, we called that the BBC. Uh, and we said, we finally found Doctor Who and Alan Yentop, control of BBC. But I once said, well, who is it? And he said, Harry Van Gorkum. And he went, Harry who? <laughs> Never heard of him. Uh, so I put myself on tape for the BBC. They could agree. Uh, so they could agree I was the right person for it. So listen, uh, I'm going to interject here. I think uh, Alan Yentop, uh, and I agree with him, was... Um, uh, a, a concern that the, the, that for it to work, it needed to be somewhat of a known a, you know, a known entity, a named brand, a named actor, uh, which, uh, which Paul McGann w was kind of at that time. I mean, he did, he did the, the Monocle Mutineer, which was very, very successful, and he's part of the wider McGann acting family. This uh, it ha He has some name recognition. And I think he's right that you know on the TV landscape at the time he really it, it needed name name recognition. I think uh, um, had David Tennant not done Casanova uh, the same year Excellent Season came out, it would have been much harder for him to get the role as Doctor Who. I mean, maybe it was so successful as so I you know I really don't know, but I think that name recognition really meant a lot. And I agree with him. You know, I agree it was very successful in England. I think not uh, uh, it was not divorced from that. Uh, so. Um, we were going to start filming uh, uh, in Vancouver in in, uh, in January. Oh, man. I, if you were in Phantom at the time, this was a glorious day. It came out of nowhere, right? Because uh, I don't know, it was about a year or so earlier, uh, a couple of years earlier, we had this thing about the Dark Dimension. They, 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 Doctor Who magazine announced, there's going to be a Doctor Who special for the 30th anniversary. So that must have been three years earlier. Uh, for the 30th anniversary, the Dark Dimension, and it's uh, going to have Tom Baker and all that. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's, uh, who was it? Adam, uh, Adrian Rigglesworth uh, writing it with... Uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Kezar Andazani. Ah, great director. Graham Harper uh, uh, directing it. And we're all excited for one month. And then the next issue, they said, nah. <laughs> so listen, we were all kind of like, and we used it. And so when this, when they first, first started mooting about this uh, Amblin production, you know, we, we were getting rumors like David Hasselhoff and then the BBC go, oh, wouldn't it be great if we get David Hasselhoff? Wouldn't that be great? Uh, uh, you know, it, it, so we kept it rumor after rumor and nothing came out. And then all of a sudden it happened, like boom, out of nowhere. And they're filming in January. It was huge. It was like we were such, such an exciting time. Um, uh, they were talking about going uh, going up to look at set, starting to think about my wardrobe, my hair. Uh, so they had uh, uh, so they were relieved that they found somebody that everybody agreed on. They they found people and not every signed off of them. Yeah, well, I think this is this is where you are. Uh, one second. There are so many people to please, especially with this like real, real co-production, which is which it was. Well, there's Alan Yen's up saying, "Yeah, no, it's not going to work with Mister Nobody." Um, you, it, they told me you uh, uh, you make it quirky and interesting, dangerous, and that's like you could. He probably would have been a good doctor. I, uh, I've never seen his work. I'm prepared to believe them all at face value. He would have been been a good casting choice, uh, other than he, he didn't have that name recognition. Um, and that's, you know, that's really hard to do. Universal Fox signed off for me. Philip Siegel and Jeffrey Sachs said, we need to do one more thing we, we need uh, before we can officially uh, you know, uh, offer it to you officially. And that one more thing, have the BBC sign off. Ultimately, the role was given Paul McGann, uh, who the BBC preferred, uh, the preferred choice of Doctor. It might have been Alan Yentel's first choice all the time. Uh, Harry was in the UK when he got the news. I was uh, ready to fly to England, uh, straight to Vancouver, he says, and then found out two days before Christmas. Oh, man. Oh, I'm sorry, mate. I really am. I, I'm, it's heartbreaking. It's heart, really heartbreaking. Uh, this is the worst call I've had to make, uh, Philip Siegel said. This is going to happen a few times in your career because you're very good, but you haven't got a name behind you. Exactly. You, you, you haven't had your big break yet, and this isn't it, right? This isn't it. Uh, I mean, listen, even, even uh, Daphne Ashbrook had, had more name recognition. She was in... Uh, she booked that that episode of Star Trek, and she was actually down to be one of the main characters in uh, in Deep Space Nine, I believe, wasn't she? Or of Voyager? Wait, well, she was she was a uh, she was uh, in 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 the kind of space spacey wheelchair, uh, and that they wanted to do that. It was either for Voyager or Deep Space Nine. Uh, but but you know she she'd been around she'd been in things again. She had more of a. Um, 
uh, you know, name, name, yeah, name recognition, even though it wasn't much. That's how little. <laughs> and he still doesn't have. I mean, again, look, here he is. Uh, it would have been interesting. It looked like like he, he he could have done the role, but again, oh look at Katie Sackoff was with him in something. Fine, let's uh let's finish re re reading this non-article. I mean, like, honestly, Doctor Who magazine. Uh, if you wanted to do an issue about Paul McGann, there's so much you could have done. There's so much that could have been. Firstly, and you didn't even have to do any new interviews. You could have gone through. Uh, uh, like your interviews, your archive interviews with, and go through the different eras of Paul McGann. You could have gone through the, the Eighth Doctor Adventures books. You know, you could have done the uh, 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 Big Finish. Has how many? Like uh, they had the initial run. You had the Lucy Miller run, and now you got the Darker. You had basically three reboots, uh, and then War. You know, the Time War, uh, the Time War Doctor stuff. Uh, and then you got the comic strips, and you had, you you just remastered all the, you know all the comic strips, and you got all the interviews by by Scott Gray and all the writers about about making. You could have had a really comprehensive issue about the Eighth Doctor, and instead you got Harry Van Gorkum uh, uh, nearly. It, it was just like yeah, this is why Doctor Who magazine uh, is. This is one of the reasons it loses sales. It's boring. It's just simply boring. Uh, and you know, people aren't, you know, aren't that you know, full of boring bloody features, which which this is. It's like this is a, maybe a one page thing, maybe no four pages out of a seventy page comic. And again, you're doing this uh, Eighth Doctor special, you know, um, the focus issue. Pull out a uh, well, an archive comic strip. I mean, why not? I mean, I actually can't afford the bloody you know to go to go up another eight pages, which I. Bet you bloody can't because you know, it's, it's. I don't think it's. I don't think publishing is doing very well. I think publishing is actually doing fine. I don't think you're doing well. So that was it. I was absolutely crushed. I flew back to America and not to Vancouver. Um, so yeah, it was. I found five months later. Um, my agent called me and said they've invited you to the premiere. Oh yeah, so that that must have been a pain in the ass. Uh, it, uh, 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 so years later, this is like the little postscript. Years later, I was working on another production, and one of the gaffers was wearing a Doctor Who cap from the, uh, from that film uh, with a logo on it. Uh, uh, he worked on it. I told him the story. He said, "Ah, that explains it." So this actually showed. This is actually the point of the story. This is where he showed show how close it goes. That explains it. On the first day of filming, the producer and the director both wore uh, t-shirts saying "Harry Who," and no one understood what it meant. What it meant was uh, 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 he 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 was gone. <laughs> he was out of it. So yeah, listen. And they have a few more paragraphs mopping up, showing talking about his career. Uh, I'm sorry this happened to you, mate. But this does not make an article. This is not an article in any way, shape, or form. Uh, Doctor Who magazine. What the hell are you doing? I mean, really, well, again, and I, I did a review of Doctor Who magazine the, uh, the other day, but I just want, wanted to show you. So we got, um, okay, we have this four-page article, uh, which is actually, you know, a, a brief overview of the, of the Eighth Doctor. That should have been the full, the full issue. Oh, no, five-page article, right? Uh, then we got this four-page article, filler bump. Uh, we got uh, 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 five-page Christopher Epson uh, uh, interview, another interview with, with Joe Hearn, and then look, another four pages talking about the timeless children and and like uh, somebody who make the fan who makes models. It's just this is all filler. This is all desperate filler, and it's not very good. It's not good. I, honestly, this is the most pointless Doctor Who feature of all time. I really get do you believe it? Hey, listen, if you can think of something absolutely more pointless. More worthless. Let me know in the comments, right? Because I'm, I'm, I'm struggling. So there you go, there you go. Uh, uh, Doctor Who magazine. At least it's good to take the piss out of, right? At least it's good for that one thing. My name is Sheila Beckett, the rabbi from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe, and ring the little bell. Ring the little bell so you're notified when new videos drop.